excited about our topic uh, today. Um, so uh, pop-up church, uh, which we'll explain all of that fun stuff about, but the, the work that Paul and Erwin have been doing over the last uh, few months um, at pop-up have been just been really exciting. Um, you know, most of you, several of you guys know kind of our ministry um, where uh, at YWAM, uh, San Francisco, we're right in the heart of San Francisco. Um, the district is called the Tenderloin. Um, and we have um, in San Francisco, there is um, around uh, 8,500 unhoused individuals in the city. Um, and we are serving that population specifically. But amongst that, we also have um, people who are living in transitional housing and um, uh, in uh, places called single room occupancies, which are old hotels, um, a 10 by 10 room with one person in the room. Uh, so we have a huge population of people around us um, and uh, pop-up church. And a lot of what we do serves that population. Um, the ministry is called Restoration Initiatives. Uh, we... Um, are here to restore, empower, and serve the poor and the marginalized of the tent building. And our heart really is to serve, to empower um, this community. Um, we do that in a lot of ways. Um, we, throughout the pandemic, we've been running showers uh, three days a week. I was telling some of the people who came a little earlier, we've been running showers uh, three days a week. Uh, we've done a little over 3000 showers since March, the beginning of the pandemic. Um, and then we've also just been really present on the block um, and in the community. We've helped advocate for more space, social distancing, all that fun stuff. We've helped with the resource hub that's now on our block that's giving back the vaccine that's been doing COVID tests for a long time for the community and really trying to serve the community in really practical ways, um, but also with obviously the message of the gospel. Um, which is why I'm so excited about this conversation, because that's what we're here for, right, is to, to, to share the gospel, both in word and deed. And Paul and Erwin, who are with us today, uh, Paul and Erwin have both been on staff full time for about four years, um, five years now, three years, maybe too many years. Sorry, Paul. Uh, <laughs> for about three years. Um, and they uh, do amazing work. They're two guys who grew up in the city um and um, have a history in the city um paul is got such a passion to develop people and to really see people know their value and worth in jesus erwin is a born evangelist i think he he was before he could you know speak normal words he was preaching the gospel to people um when he was a little kid <laughs> <laughs> so uh erwin's uh they're both uh phenomenal um, and just have been such natural fits in the YWAM community as far as their passion and their heart for this neighborhood and specifically for the poor in San Francisco. Um, and I'm so proud of the work they do. And um, I'll let them kind of do the storytelling here, um, but uh, really grateful for Paul and Erwin to be on the team. Um, so I wanted to start uh just feel free if you have specific questions you want to ask us you can feel free um i'm looking at the chat so we can make sure that um conversations uh um if you guys have specific questions but we'll also have some time for some questions at the end um but uh so pop-up church um paul i would love to hear uh why don't you start either paul or erwin can answer this but like what does pop-up look like like what is what do you guys do um and then um, after that, I think I'd love to ask uh, Paul, um, how did it come about? So maybe, I don't know, Erwin, if you want to describe what pop-up looks like. Yeah, definitely. Um, well, we basically wanted to recreate everything that a church does um, on a Sunday um, right there on the street, make it accessible because, you know, everything was um, indoors was banned and churches weren't going outdoors. I couldn't find a single church outdoors and, <clears throat> you know, it's, it's beautiful how people attend to the services, you know, of the body, you know, food and clothing, things like that. But, you know, we, we as Christians know that a, a person is more complex than just what he eats and what he wears. He has a soul and he has a spirit. And we wanted to bring that. We wanted to bring that aspect of a resource um, from our ministry um, directly to the streets, directly to the people. Um, we set up chairs right there on the street. 
Um, the street is blocked off, so there's no traffic. Um, Glide actually um, lets us borrow, you know, cones and they, they, you know, they help us with whatever we need. And we wanted to preach the gospel every week. We wanted to let, give people hope. I mean, we can give them a sandwich, but the sandwich will leave the body. But the hope in the gospel is what is, is eternal. And we want to give people a little piece of heaven, you know. And so we, we play Good, good music, good worship music. It's in the background while we're, we're handing out cookies and, a, and some good, the best hot chocolate in San Francisco is what I call it. At least I'm getting there. And, and we talk to people, you know, we sit down with people, you know, they don't want to talk and they don't have to talk. We, we, we still serve them. We still smile at them. We have, we, we wish them a good day and we bless them. Um, and that's kind of what we do. We wanted to recreate everything, the fellowship part, the community part, the, the, you know, a lot of people ask for prayer. And so we're, I know it's been social distancing, but we've been laying hands and we've been giving hugs. Um, you know, we felt peace about doing that. Um, and that's something that, we, like I said, we wanted to recreate everything that a church has and bring it right to the people, bring it right. The Glide serves breakfast and we're serving spiritual breakfast. And so it's a beautiful partnership when it's a you know beautiful collaboration between two organizations that, that truly love the unhoused and you know, you're, 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 there's many ways that you can serve just like in a church, you know, there's, you know, there's not everybody's going to preach, you know, but, you know, some people come just to pray and people come just to be prayer warriors. They just stand, they smile, they pray. Other people come to, to evangelize. They talk to people. They, they share the, the love of Jesus with people. Um, other people just want to do logistics. They just want to hand out cookies and help set up and break down. I mean, God bless their heart. I mean, you know, it's just, it's a body. It's a, it's a whole, it's a whole function. And so, that's it's awesome. been a blessing. It's been a blessing, not just to the people. It's been a blessing to us. You know, we were able to birth this in the middle of a pandemic. And so, yeah, that, that's kind of in a nutshell. Like I said, we put chairs out and we have we have ministers on hand. That's awesome. Paul, why don't you share a little bit about kind of that process? Erwin um, er just hinted at it, like, right, you guys birthed this out of the pandemic. Like, why? Like, why did you see the need for pop up why did you all of a sudden want to start sharing and preaching on the street yeah um before pop up uh we had a club called the transform club it, it's still going but um it's changed it's more of like a, a evangelistic only just disciples but uh uh before the pandemic it was more of a church people come inside we had uh, food you know worship Preaching, fellowship, you know, same thing the church does, but inside. For the longest time, you know, God was speaking speaking to me about going outside and, and doing church outside. But uh, it was a, such a delay that I, I guess maybe uh, he wanted me to do it at the right time, or maybe it was not the right time, or maybe I was delaying on it. Uh, I don't know. But, but the pandemic really... Um, um, forced us not forced us but um we had no choice because we, we had to operate in our vision and uh and we had to go outside because there's no more inside functions so uh one, once pandemic hit uh we were in quarantine and uh you know i, I prayed hard about what to do next because i just felt in my spirit like i, I can't be in, in this place in my home quarantining like this and uh I just knew it was very unhealthy for me. And um, so uh, I, it was hard for me, but I, I went outside and our block is uh, is a very social block. Um, people just, even in the pandemic, it didn't look like the pandemic outside. It was tent city, people had tents all over the place. People were just talking, doing life. It was just, uh, it was just normal, like nothing, like they didn't even know about the pandemic. So I, I just took advantage of that. I, I was very careful. I prayed about it and I, I, I got the uh, green light to go outside and, and start my mission again. So I would, um, you know, talk to people, you know, be very careful. And then uh, all of a sudden I got into a theological debate with a man named Joe. Ty, we call him Ty Joe. Um, and uh, uh, he, he, me and him had some like heated uh, words coming, going back and forth. And then all, we got into my car and uh, he, he, he actually had a tear in his eye and I was like, come in my car. So I got him in my car. It was pandemic. So I'm like still tripping. Um, and uh, 
we worshiped for a little bit. I talked to him for a little bit. He kept, confessed his sins and then he gave his life to Christ. And right there, that one, that very moment, it just said, okay, this God is confirming to me that I need to be out here. Uh, even with the pandemic and, and all these people telling me, you shouldn't do that. You shouldn't go outside, you know, this and that. So I got a lot of uh, pushback, but it was hard, but I had to keep going on because being in my house was uh, going to make me more sick than, than, than the coronavirus. <laughs> that's, what I, that's what I felt at the time. Um, so, um, yeah, outside was our mission. Uh, outside was like, okay, this, is, this needs to happen. This, we need to go outside. So we started a pop-up uh, in the beginning. Um, we had pizzas in the beginning. We ordered like 10 pizzas and we started, and, you know, getting a speaker and then start speaking, you know, just little things, not really the gospel, We're trying to get used to it. And um, yeah, it's just, uh, it, it's, where, it's, where, it's where we should be at. And that's the future of what we're going to do in our ministry. Um, and uh, yeah, very excited. Love, I loved how natural um, this came about because like Paul said, like we were doing showers from day one of the pandemic. And then it was just like, we realized the need wasn't just the shower, right? Like the need was this like inner connection. And um, we, Paul and Erwin and other members of our team were connecting with people personally. And then it just made sense, right? Like we all have the ability to get on this thing called Zoom and connect with a, with a congregation. But so much of our community didn't have that ability. And Paul and Erwin really stepped up and starts this church community out on the street where people couldn't jump on Zoom and have preaching and worship. But um, so, it was, yeah, pretty uh it's been exciting to see um what's been going on um what what have you guys noticed as like the community's response um to us um as far as people coming to the church people on the block uh we have another service agency called glide right across the street um i love the question in the in the chat of uh what aspects of the gospel are people engaging with you guys most about Well, our focus is to engage in people's souls. And so like, like me, I'm always trying to encourage people with the word and I'm always trying to pray for people. And another thing that really that I've, I've learned to do more is listen. People just, they, they talk to you, they, they, they release whatever they have in their heart. You listen, it heals them. Um, and then they give you an opportunity to share your heart. And that's when I come in and I pray for them and I let them know what God thinks about them. And that's been one of the biggest things. Like people have been coming, they just they just want to they want to have friends. They want to have people that are nice to them. They want to they want to experience. That's why I said I want to bring a little piece of heaven in, in that one hour and a half that we're there, where it's peaceful. You know, where there's no pressure from anything. Where actually we just want to serve you. We just want to spend time with you. And I feel like the human interaction part of it is the 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 biggest part. Like the people that come on a weekly basis, the people that you know send people, and you know the volunteers have been getting it. Just, it's all happened through connections. It's all happened through just loving connections. And I feel like that's the most important thing. You know, it, they even say you guys are different from all the other places because you guys are so nice. You guys are, you guys just, you know, you guys are happy. And like us bringing the joy of the Lord of that moment, it, it's, it's something that they forget is real, that you can be a joyful person. You can be happy, you know, and, you know, at the same time, we meet them where they're at. Like, we, we keep it real with them. We're like, we're not perfect, too. You know, we struggle. We have problems, too. But, hey, like, you know, Jesus. We always we always bring it back to Jesus. And that's that's something that's very important to me is, is, is that Jesus is the center. Because we have showers, you know, but we don't, you know, showers are showers, you know. And you don't always have a chance to talk with people. And, but of this one, it's very specific. They ask me for socks, and I tell them, hey, come tomorrow. Today, our resource is prayer and Bibles, and, and fellowship, and some the best hot chocolate sandwiches. Yeah, that communal aspect, <laughs> right, is so important, like that relationship building. Um, Paul, what about you? What, what responses have you gotten? How's the community responded to you guys being out preaching the you gospel? Know, uh, we, get, we get a lot of emotional people. Uh, people will just cry out of nowhere. And then they, they, they would just pour out their heart to me. And like Erwin said, best thing to do is just listen in that moment and just let them pour out their heart. Because I noticed that when they do that, 
and they're done, you know, you can have a like a love language of touch, put a hand on the, on the shoulder, uh, say, I got your back, you know, I'm here for you. We're, we're basically, uh, the number one problem in the Tenderloin is a family problem. And we want to be a family to the people in the streets. And we want to do life with them. We want to be in their business. We want to, just like a regular intermediate family, we want to display that same characteristic, that, that same model to the Tenderloin. And, uh, and, and, and they look at us like, they're, they're kind of like, you know, they're kind of dumbfounded of what's going on and how much love is in the air, how much the, the atmosphere changes in that moment. How, how we transform the block in, 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 in one pop-up setting where I always told Erwin this, like, let's be a, let's be a click like in high school where, you know, we got the popular click and we, we, we make our, we form our own click and people see that, you know, but in high school, they're like, uh, you're not cool enough to be in our click, but ours is the other way around. Come on in. We always see people looking and seeing what we're doing, but never join us. And uh, last pop up, uh, I told Erwin, look at the people across the street, they're looking. They're looking at us, look. And uh, Erwin's like, let's go serve them some hot chocolate and some cookies. I was like, let's do it. So we went across the street, we, we left our, our whole pop up setting and we went across the street and we served them. And it was just uh, those guys and, and other days would, would raise up their hands and praise the Lord. So we're affecting not only the people that come to our setting, but even outside, that's what but what makes uh, church in the streets so powerful and, and, and influential in the Tenderloin. And then uh, you just get a lot of testimonies. You get a lot of people just pouring out their hearts and, and, and basically you just, you don't have to uh, tell people what to do or force them to come to this, come to that. Just meet them where they're at, basically it. Yeah, Erwin, you had mentioned, um, I mean, you guys are, are so faithful, but I know you guys also connect with a lot of volunteers and there's maybe one or two particular volunteers that have come from the community itself. Um, you just want to share about uh, Garfield, Nolan? Yeah, yeah. So this guy Garfield, he's uh, ex a lot of things, you know, <laughs> you know, he used to be in the drugs and then crazy lifestyles and like, you know, crazy freak accidents and you know, he would, he would, he would come, but he would just kind of like look and, you know, we have very one minute conversations, but then he came to one of the pop-ups and like Paul says, it was thick that day. Um, the presence of God was just, this there it was so much people there. The music was hitting at the right moment, right volume. It was just a moment and, and I, he was able to open up his heart to me and I was able to pray for him. And, and I heard his heart. I prayed for him. And he said, man, I want more. I want more of this. I want to, I want to, I want to be used by God. Like, you know, he, he said, I, I don't know what, what was been happening with me, but like, I, I want to get back to that first love and I want God to use me on the streets. And ever since that moment, I mean, like we've been walking on a weekly basis, you know, he comes in with Paul on Tuesdays, do evangelism. Um, he's become more of a servant. He says he's finding ways to serve people on the block. He does little weird things, you know, sometimes, you know, for money, sometimes not for money, but even like I talked to him on Monday and I said, what, how can we continue to bless you? And he's like, man, I want to become a better Christian. I want to, I want to, I want to help people. And to me, that's what I, that's my goal is discipleship. I mean, people come and we never, we ne may never see them again, but to see somebody on a consistent basis that was, was touched and that touch continues and we keep feeding it. And now he in, turns around and he affects more people that I can never affect. I, you know, he's from the Tenderloin. He's, he's in that life, you know? And so to me, that's the golden part is that we want to bring people into the kingdom and we want them to bring other people into the kingdom and, and make this making disciples is, is our center focus, you know? And uh, we, we, we use church on the streets, pop-up church as a, as a, you know, as a tool to bring them into the kingdom, you know, bring them into to the life of God, you know? And, he wanted to do a DTS and everything. Like he, he's so serious. I thought it was like, people get emotional all the time. Like Paul said, people get really emotional. They make decisions for Christ. They, they, they want to follow God and maybe we don't see him for a month, but his has been different. His, he was touched by God and, and it shocks me. It gives me a, it gives me a good, healthy weight to know that like, Hey, this is real. Like this is, this is what we're here for. And, and 
I love it. I love walking with him. I love spending time with him, buying him lunch. Like it's, it's, it's a fruit. It's a fruit of what, what God is doing with us. And, I, and that's all we want is fruit. One of the things as a ministry we talk a lot about is um, like restoration initiatives. YWAM is a ministry of presence. Um, everything we do, we want to make sure that we are present in the community. And I don't know, Paul, if you have anything you want to share, like story, but one of the, the things that I think I've realized is that we've got a lot of favor with pop-up. Like we've got like, you know, glide blocks off the street. So no cars can come during pop-up, which is pretty amazing. Like the glide staff will hang out with us and like watch out or, you know, Erwin said earlier, they let us borrow the cones or things that we need. Um, not necessarily a faith-based organization is helping us, you know, preach the gospel on a Sunday. Um, and I think a large part of that is because of presence, because that they've seen us, they've seen our action, they've seen us put, put our hands to love this community in a practical, tangible way. Um, but I don't know, Paul, if you have anything you want to share about presence or stories just about the consistency that you've had with people and, and, and what you've noticed over the last year. Yeah, um, it's, uh, it's definitely hard to walk those streets and to bring a different type of attitude. You get, you get a lot of people with the same attitude, you, get, you know, but you walk through the streets and you, and you look like the light of the world with joy and, and uh, concern and, and all these good attributes that the Holy Spirit gives us. And you get a lot of pushback and you get a lot of people who are like um, paranoid about you or, or you get people that compliment you. So you, you get all these things. Um, thrown at you and it's uh it's, it's pretty hard to go about it but the main thing i do is is go out there with a good attitude to bring that's how i bring the presence is to manifest the fruits of the spirit within me every day before i even go out there to be prayed up every day to uh, to be ready for action and, and let my mind be prepared for what it's what i want to see and what i want to do in those streets so that's where I come uh, and, and bring the presence in, in, in my individual self. And I, I like to teach all the people around me um, that same model uh, because it's, it's growing. It doesn't seem like it's growing sometimes, but God is always growing it. And, and, then, um, and, I, and I see that in other people, like, like there's, there's, there's there's times where I ask the Lord, I need disciples. I need the laborers. We need laborers, Lord. We're, we're stuck here. You know, we're tired. Um, and I would try to force disciples. I'd try to make disciples with my own strength. And it, it was not working. So I would just sit back, relax, be, you know, enjoyed with the people around me. And they, they, they just come. Like, for instance, one man named Jeremy. He's, he's one of our faith, most faithful guys. And he's an evangelist. And he's a gospel preacher and he has a, a lot of gifts. But this guy just came up to me one time. He was like, hey, I was about, to, I was getting into YWAM, opening the door. And he comes up to me. He was like, hey, first thing he says, I want to preach the gospel. I'm like, whoa, okay, all right, all right. And ever since that day, we never um, lost track. He's still with us. He's sold out to the vision. And it's like most of our disciples came like that. I didn't have to force them or tell them let's do this come on i spit vision but that's all i did um and the lord the the, lord, the father lures them to us and and then and um you just gotta rest be in the in the same position um and make sure you're available and that all things will work out you know and that's how i bring the presence there's a great question from steve who i think just actually left um but uh what what have you guys noticed, like people's spiritual backgrounds that are coming to pop up? Do you feel like they're familiar with the word? Are people suspicious? I know Steve lives in another area of the city where he feels, you know, there's people are super suspicious of, um, you know, the gospel and religion and Christianity. Like, how are those things received? Like, what are people's spiritual backgrounds? How familiar are they with the gospel? Um, what are you guys experiencing? We've had, I mean, man, I say this humbly, but we've had uh, zero pushback. I mean, there was this one guy when Paul preached, he, uh, he said Satan was going to kill him right when he got off the mic. <laughs> he 
So um, he said Satanists were out to kill. Anyways, but honestly, nobody has questioned. We've um, we've plainly stated that Jesus is the Lord, um, that Jesus is the only way, that Jesus is he resurrected and he died. Um, you know, Glide has heard us. We've had one time uh, we, we accidentally put the speaker so loud that you could hear like four blocks away. And uh, since Paul was starting to preach, I didn't want to lower it. And Paul was just saying, hey, man, the kingdom of God is here and salvation only through Jesus. And we have we've had zero pushback because at the end of the day, if they don't want to talk to us, they don't have to. Like some people, they don't want to talk. They just want to sit there, listen to the music and eat their eat their cookies and their hot chocolate. And that's fine. Like, we, you know, I'll, I'll bring them more cookies and more hot chocolate. And so thankfully, we haven't had any any negative pushback. We haven't had anybody complain about it. We haven't had I mean, at the end of the day, it's like we're not doing anything wrong. You know what I mean? And I feel like I, I, this is what Glide said. I love the way you guys love our love our people is one of the Glide staff said. You guys are nice to our people. And so that's the day she brought the cone. She said, I want our people to be safe. And you guys are really nice to them. And so it's kind of one of those things where at the end of the day, they don't even care what we're preaching. They see what we're doing and they see how we're acting, and how we're consistent and how we're real. We're just really, and we're genuine. I think it puts it puts all theologies aside. I mean, we could probably be Muslim doing it. Well, I wouldn't go that far, but you know, we could be. A, we're not preaching religion. We're 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 showing love, you know. And it just it, it's a different spin on it, you know. Yeah, for those five minutes that somebody preaches the gospel, they preach the gospel. But thankfully, thankfully, um, we haven't had any pushback now. If, if uh, their spiritual backgrounds. Uh, I don't know, you know, some people know about the Lord, some people don't, you know, the, the only thing they know is that moment of how they're being treated and, and how they feel and, and they like it and they, and they, they, they want more. And so we've had that, we've had that blessing for now, from that, not, not that. much issues. Everyone, I love the way you phrased that, right? Like, you know, we don't always know people's background, but for our community that like in the, the presence is so important. The moment is so important and how people are treating people like though our community in that moment is what's important and for a community that gets you know pushed and swept around so often like to be welcomed in a place i think is we've heard from our community that it's so important that you know uh, we talk about with our showers um, our shower ministry that dignity and hospitality are like the two things we hang our hat on right like we want Yes, shower is important. It's good. But more than that, we want people to feel like they're welcomed and that they're human and that they are worthy of love and that we have a, a, a God that loves them. And, and that um, so, uh, yeah, I love, um, love, love what Paul and Erwin are doing consistently. You guys go out uh, 14 times a week. You guys go out. How many Sundays are you guys out there doing this? We do it every two weeks, uh, twice a month. We're looking uh, very soon to do it every week. We're talking about it We're because uh, we're our volunteers is growing. We also do Transform Club twice a week. That's going to stay at twice a week. It's an evangelistic uh, club simply to go out in other places of the Tenaloin um, and just uh, witness to people and, and to see what the Lord has in mind for us for other blocks of the Tenaloin. One of the most dangerous things is if you get Paul and Irwin together and you start talking about the future and like what they want to do. Um, it's a scary play. Actually, it's a really good place. It's just, uh, but I love to hear like, if you guys, what's your dream for pop-up? What do you see? Man, I want to have multiple pop-ups all over the Tenderloin simultaneously. Like I want that to be church hour in the Tenderloin. Like the city knows what time it is. The drug dealers know what time it is. If you, you know, the city knows what time it is, like the 24 hours a day, you know, it's, it, it is what it is, but we want for that one hour, hour and a half on Sunday morning that if you're going through the tenderloin, you're going to see pop up. You're going to hear about Jesus. You're going to see people with maybe signs or giving things out. It's just such uh, we want to captivate the hour, that hour and a half. And, you know, the, the Bible says the kingdom of God is, is uh, suffers violence and only the violent will go get it. And, you know, like I was telling Steve the other day, um, the drug dealers don't ask nobody for permission to go stand on corners and, and sell drugs. They don't have, they're aggressive. They're hungry. They go out and they get it. 
And I feel like we have the same type of drive, but for the kingdom and for God. And yeah, we want to, you know, I mean, I don't want to use the word takeover, but you know, we want to see the king, we want to see the kingdom manifested, even if it's for one hour, two hours. And that's one of our visions is it's not just, we want to, we want to see the city changed and impacted through the tenderloin, you know, like, can anything good come out of the tenderloin? Well, yes. And, and it's, it's beautiful what, what the devil wanted to use to destroy and the reputation San Francisco has and people that's all they talk about. Well, they're not going to have that to talk about anymore. Now they're going to talk about what the church did and what the church is doing. And our vision is not to do it just through YWAM because we want to do it through all the churches. We want to do it through all the, like we want it to be a collective effort. Who is this? Who is this? This is everybody. Like, this is just the church, you know, Lutherans and Catholics and Christians, Pentecostals, Calvinists, people who love Jesus and they love people. And so we want to see the tenderloin changed. I wanted to open up if anybody in the, um, uh, anybody in the community on the call has any specific questions. Um, we'd love to, 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 to give a moment for that. There's, um, so there's some easy ways uh, for connection. Um, if you're in the Bay Area, which I know we have people from all around right now, which is exciting, um, and would like to connect and volunteer, um, you can for sure do that. Um, and would love to see uh, people come and be a part of what we're doing at Pop-Up. Uh, we have a newsletter, and I'm going to post these links in the chat. Uh, but we have a newsletter you're more than welcome to be uh, to sign up for and hear kind of what we're doing. Um, and then a really natural way is we just started doing uh, hot chocolate. Um, again, which hot chocolate, we go out every other Friday night out on the street um, and we uh, give out hot chocolate to our community, pray for people um, and I just want to be present with people um, and uh, connect them to services, connect them obviously to the Lord. Um, so I'll post these links in the chat, uh, but we'd love to see if uh, you'd be, uh, wanna bring a group or a church. Uh, there's the outreach link uh, to do hot chocolate with us. It would be so great. Um, and then here's our newsletter link. Um, it'd be awesome uh, just to stay connected with us and um, what we're doing. Um, yeah, uh, really grateful. Um, sorry, I lost track of, I got distracted by something out my window. Um, uh, yeah. Um, so, uh, easy ways to kind of partner with us. The other thing that we're looking, um, and just, uh, would, uh, invite you guys into, um, we are looking for, uh, people to continue to partner and invest in kind of what we're doing, um, on the street, um, and uh, with um, pop-up church, with showers, with everything that we do here at Wyoming San Francisco. Um, and um, so if you are interested in donating monthly or um, as a special gift, um, I put that link in the chat. Um, Paul and Irwin are also looking at becoming full-time um, with us. They're kind of supplementing with driving Uber and, and things like that, um, but they would really like to come um, on staff full-time and I would love to have them full-time. Um, so if you're also interested in supporting these two amazing men, um, you can get that through the giving link as well. Um, but we'd love, um, yeah. So if you're interested in any of those things, I put the links um, in the chat. Um, so uh, there's a question, guys. The What Sunday is going forward? Um, are you guys going to be doing pop-up? And at what time if people want to come and join? Well, right now it's uh, every other week so oh go ahead paul <clears throat> it's every other week but uh starting this sunday we uh we start at uh 7 30. um we pray and then we get started at around eight but every two weeks after that is uh definitely uh the every every sunday every two weeks on the, that sunday <laughs> but um yeah if you want to um, volunteer, uh, more than happy to have you. Um, yeah. 
if you go to the outreach page um, on the link that I sent, um, there's a, a volunteer that you can connect with and um, we can connect you with Paul and Erwin and, and the outreach um, uh, and the pop-up church. So Steve, can you clarify if it's the first and third Sunday or the second and fourth Sunday of every month? Yeah, it, it's literally falls every other. So sometimes there's a first, there's like a fifth Sunday or whatever. So it just goes on an every other basis. Um, if that makes sense. Cause you know, some weeks, some months aren't so clean where it first fits on the, if some months are the first and third and some it'll switch to the second and fourth. Um, it's, they literally go out rain or shine every other, um, every other Sunday. Right guys. Yeah. 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 I mean, if it's raining too hard, it's, it becomes a, a little difficult, but, um, pretty much, yeah, we're there all the time. Yeah. We can, uh, I, I mean, we can send you the dates of all the ones we're going to have and maybe put on the website or something like that. Yeah. Um, we also have a, yeah. So. Yeah. And if you email volunteer at YWAM San Francisco.org, um, the, our volunteer coordinator can connect you with Paul and Irwin, um, to confirm dates. Would, uh, yeah, I just want to invite, uh, I believe Lori, uh, from Abide Fellowship. Was that it? Abiding Place Church. Sorry about that. Yeah. Um, no, that's fine. Abiding Place. Yes. Yeah. I would love uh, if you wanted to kind of close our time a bit and then share about what you guys are doing here. Well, um, Abiding Place is a small church. Uh, the, be the building is kind of large, but the, the people are small. People are big, just few in numbers. And we are in the Park Rose neighborhood area of Portland, Oregon. So we've been suffering just a little bit of violence, just like a lot of Portland has. Um, we just had this call where we're tired of just being us four and no more inside the walls of the church. And so we've begun doing prayer walking. We've been doing a drive through food pantry a couple times a month. Um, not as many numbers as we would like, but we're always looking for more opportunities to figure out how we can connect with people in the neighborhood because it's pretty closed community. Um, so we've been doing prayer walking and just getting to know people. And uh, my heart is, I just, I'm longing to see like coffee shops or little mom and dad cafes in the middle of neighborhoods where the community can gather and they can be uh, places where believers can meet and just share the love of Jesus. Um, that's some of my heart, but I haven't the faintest idea how to get there. But I loved what you guys were talking about. Thank you so much for your testimony. Um, Pop-up church, that sounds great. We do have a group of people that have been going to the homeless and they're trying to figure out how to do a service. And so I want to be able to share what you guys shared. Um, um, so I'll, let me just close in prayer. Yeah. So Father, we thank you so much for I believe it's even the changed um, face of your church. Um, even though we wouldn't have wanted to go through a period of time that we've been going through at the same time, we recognize your hand of goodness in everything that you're bringing about and the stirring that you're doing in our hearts. And so, Father, I ask that you continue to draw us together in unity. I ask for even more and more wonderful creative ideas for how to actually connect with people, how to love people, how to be aware of the one that's in front of us that's so full of significance in your eyes and father i pray your blessing on both of these young men and on ywam for their their history all over the world i just pray for um favor and i ask for open doors father and more creative ideas than they've even had i pray for greater and greater amounts of volunteers as people are longing believers are longing your church is longing to be effective and to see your light come and to see the glory of god come and minister your love and your power to the world around so we thank you for this time in jesus name amen amen thank you so much Lori. praying for you guys up in portland thank, thank you, you.